Hello there everybody, Bullabo10000 here, bringing you another episode of Mag Mammal 2, and today, uh, we had a few problems. Uh, so, I actually recorded, as you can see here, up to level 7 of tier 10, as in like 7th place of tier 10, before realising that my recording software for my webcam had recorded my audio and the game audio on the same track, so I have to refilm four episodes of Mag Mammal 2. So, we're starting with this one, and let's quickly chat with Guts Man. I've been trying to make up space jokes, but coming up with a good punchline is a huge pain in the asteroid. But um, And yeah, I have to replay through a whole bunch of levels, but luckily, I know where everything is in the levels, so I can just show them off. Easy. So, let's start with this first level. This is 12th place is Flashman85, Gutsman's Asteroid. Score 40.0, 44, 35, 42, 37, 42. So, two energy elements, five noble nickels. I actually have them all, obviously, as I've filmed this before. But let's go. Alright. Dr. Light. Man, can you hear me? This spaceship is carrying supplies, rare materials, and for some reason, innocent puppies for Wily's new asteroid base. I need you to go through the engine room and take control of the bridge so we can bring the cargo back home safely. Expect heavy resistance on the bridge. Wily has undoubtedly sent his best robots to defend this cargo. All right, first things first, go to the left, and, well, you do that. You get yourself a Noble Nickel, heck yeah. And an M-Tank. So there's actually two exits to this level, and we're gonna do the quicker one first. So we've got one of these, uh, I believe these are Whoppers, I think they're called, or something like that. But you can just go past this guy, and there's an energy element right here. There you go, take control of the bridge, and challenge complete, because I did it with no damage. Easy. But we need to go back and actually do the rest of the level. So, effectively, what the level expects you to do is you enter here, and then you think, oh, we need to kill the mini boss. And once you kill the mini boss, then the fun starts. Alright, let me just get a, a nice charge shot of the ready. There we go. And then you drop. And this is the actual level. We end up going onto an asteroid. Or, you know, you could overload the power core, blow up the spaceship. I swear when I build your replacement, I'll make sure he's a pacifist who never wants to blow up anything. Luckily, you've landed on the asteroid where Wily is constructing his new base. Why don't you see what else you can destroy? God damn, Dr. Light. He's an absolute madman in this. Alright. These little circular enemies are very weird for some reason. Especially in this, not this engine, but just in this... In this specific screen, I notice that they're, they're not always the most fluid. There we go, get ourselves a Noble Nickel. That's Noble Nickel number two out of five. Head up here, head down here, and head down here. These switches are dangerous. They will do bad things. You don't want to trigger them. However, sometimes you can't help but trigger them. So, you know, just trigger them at your own peril. Luckily for us, we have Space Physics. And lots of injuries. But it's okay, because we're going down. Alright, there's the next Noble Nickel. And that's another Noble Nickel obtained. Ah, uh, do I want to... Mm. There we go, done it. So now, the fun part comes. It's one of those. But luckily, we do get a nice health boost, but you want to keep shooting this way because those things are going to start attacking. And they are kind of dangerous. So there's three Noble Nickels obtained. Yep, this guy's going to drop down, and we can kill him. There we go. Head across here. And then ride this one to get this Noble Nickel right here. Head up here, head across here. And then we should be able to get through. Yeah, there we go. So this is an interesting thing. You don't trust Eddie. You can't trust him. I got I got completely blindsided by that my first playthrough, and it was hilarious. And I'm so sad that, you know, obviously this isn't blind because of the audio issues. 
but I did die from this, so I didn't see if we could go through here or not. So this is something I've not seen before. Okay. <laughs> no way! Was that fucking- that was the guts man's- oh my god, I didn't know that was a thing. That must have been the hidden your seat cheat. The, the hidden your seat cheat that was mentioned in um one of the judges' comments, and I, I was wondering what that meant. Oh my god, that's amazing! And then we get to the worst part of the stage, the rock gimmick. Oh, honest to god, this is the worst gimmick in the stage. These bowler dispensers are on a proximity trigger, so please refrain from charging past them like a woozy water buffalo. It's becoming difficult to find replacement parts to rebuild you. Why must my last shipment of materials never even arrive because the delivery person blew it up? Also, it appears the asteroid is now hurtling towards the sun. My soap opera should be over before you get incinerated, so keep exploring until I'm ready to teleport you out. God damn, Dr. Light, you are... one of those guys. And there's the Noble Nickel, and this is also the final room as well. Before the boss, so that's fun. And down here is the boss room. Just kind of get to the middle, and then we get attacked by not one, but two Gutsmen! Yes, that guy did just throw a minecart at us. Yes, it was quite amazing. Truly a sight to behold. I guess I could use an M-Tank. I don't really want to die in here, so... Yeah, I, w I would have died anyway, so... Ah, uh, it does throw more than one minecart. But with that, they are down, and the energy element is ours. And with that, that is the end of Gutsman's Asteroid. Five Noble Nickels, two energy elements. Let's see what the judges had to say. Snowrunt Pyro, 44 out of 50. Really nice level. The whole plot of the level and the dialogue is really funny. And there were many moments that caught me by surprise, like the spaceship blowing up and Eddie. The mining theme of the level is pulled off really well, and there's a bunch of mining-themed gimmicks that are introduced well in this safe environment, and the difficulty is properly ramped up. I love the usage of the Drillman lights, it's a complete subversion of their intended use, and it's really neat. I was also very pleasantly surprised to see the napalm drills get usage too, considering their function in this game. Probably the only part I didn't really like is the part with the Drillman rocks, but I feel like that's less just it being not as good and more just me being terrible at dealing with them. The boss was neat and funny, but I feel like the arena got a bit too cramped at times due to having lots of Drillman rock spawners in it. But they're just some tiny complaints in an otherwise pretty great level, and it's overall super fun to play. Also, I found that hidden year seat you. Jupy Hornet, 35 out of 50. Man! Who knew Dr. Light was so good at dry humor? Anyway, this was a pretty fun level. I really enjoyed the space challenge it provided. My main issue was the room where Eddie is just sitting there until he shoves an instant death drill in your face. That's not fair to the player because they won't see it coming. It's not terrible because there's a checkpoint in the same room, but it's still pretty annoying. A few sections toward the end went a bit crazy with the falling rocks too. The boss on the other hand was a super fun and unexpected fight against two Gutsmans, or is it Gutsmen? Angel, 42 out of 50. Really cool journey. I like the progression in this level going deeper and deeper into the asteroid. This level's use of the drills was pretty creative, and to be honest, I kind of wish it put more focus on them throughout. Eddie's secret weapon is the best thing ever, though. Sometimes I found the enemies to be pretty tricky or to get to, or the rocks to be slightly frequent to make it past them safely, but aside from that, I really like their placements. I also like the little secrets hidden in this level and the secret exit. Really cool level overall. Gariri, 37 out of 50. I found the concept of this level interesting and executed fairly well. Despite that, it just doesn't feel that interesting. However, I think I like the easter eggs uh, hidden throughout the level, and I like how you can finish the stage by just skipping the first mini-boss. Other than that, it's enjoyable, but that's about it. And a spark, 42 out of 50, to the creator, you dickhead, you absolute dickhead. If you're reading this before you've played the stage, you'll know exactly what I'm on about as soon as you see it. Actually, all told, you made me laugh. A lot. This was fun, for that reason alone, but you thankfully backed it up with some very solid level design and really nifty usage of dev kit assets. You turned what sounded like the most boring level and theme possible and put as much pizzazz as the dev kit assets allow you. Your best feature, next to the humor, is you playing with player expectations. You subvert it several times and always left me wondering what you could possibly pull off next. 
you also did a pretty good job with gimmick conveyance so even new players should understand what game mechanics they should expect out of you. I wasn't a big fan of the falling rocks, there's a few too many of them in spots which kills the pace, nor the noble nickel associated with the gimmick, but everything else was pretty damn spiffy. There was one or two iffy jumps and the aforementioned dick move that let you down a bit, but I think a lot of people are going to like this one. Also, hi guts man, you are used well and that's great. To anyone playing this, find the second energy element. That shows this guy's commitment to the comedic arts. And that's that. All right, so moving on. Vespa Woman. Hey you, hope you've been enjoying yourself. Must be fun going through all these simulations with all of their enemies and bugs and death spikes and bottomless pits and bosses and uh, perilous platforming and... Uh, please don't be mad at us. Aw. And... 11th, Cruz Elroy's Sheriff Man, score 40.6, 45, 47, 40, 39, 32. This is one of my personal favorites, and it's one energy element and three noble nickels. Let's go. We get this beautiful starting sequence. We get the lovely cowboy enemies making a, a, not, a not a triumphant return. I love the music and I love the theme of this level. It's just, it's good. This is a solid level and it is just so fun. Those buzzards especially, they are really cool new enemies. They're new assets as well, uh, custom, so that, that makes them even more special. So first things first, we want to get the rush jet and just quickly hop on over and grab this noble nickel. And then we head down into the cave. As I said, I've played the stage before because of the audio issues. So I'm going to be going through it more like a walkthrough than I am as a blind run. So we head across here, head up here, and we're actually gonna make a really cool stream transition in a moment. Because we transition from this beautiful cave to this beautiful western town. And I like how we've got little, uh, we got little wanted posters for Mega Man and base, and oh god, I'm Mega Man. That means I'm wanted in this town. Oh no, partner. Get Rush Coil out. Yeah, the second Noble Nickel is already here. And we head this way. I really like, by the way, I don't know if we can go backwards. Yeah, we can. I like the usage of the death pits here. That one uh, in the other room there, it was faded to black, which kind of implies this is actually a death pit because it's, you know, dark and black and dreary, as opposed to this sort of pit where you've got the cave, uh, you, you've got the cave tiles kind of showing off, you know, just what the, uh, uh, that it's not a deadly pit. I just really like that. It's attention to detail like that that I can really respect when it comes to my Mega Man. There we go. This is quite a rompy stage, though. I will give it that. There are it's it's mainly enemy based uh, enemy based platforming. So there's not as much like precision platforming, but it's more based around just the fact that, you know, you're facing a whole bunch of enemies. Also, the sunset from Tomahawk Man's make a, uh, Tomahawk Man's stage finally makes an appearance, because it's a bloody beautiful graphic and more people should be using it. But not too many people, because then it would get overused and then it would be sad. Cross across here. And we should be at the end now. But that's not the end of the stage, of course. If we go up to the right, we actually get our third Noble Nickel in a really cool sequence that I really like for this stage. So let me just quickly get the Rush Jet out, and let's go up. And... Proto Man. I mean, he is wanted, you know, of course he's gonna help us out because we're wanted as well. And he leaves us with a Noble Nickel. And according to the judges, this was the only stage in the game that actually did that, which is really cool. We get a little spike drop here, but it's nothing too dangerous or deadly. And then, trains! Although that train is in a very evil spot, I think I'm, I'm okay dying there, if it means we can just respawn. And we respawn right here as well, perfect. Even if that train just kind of sniped us for no reason there. Oh, almost dropped onto the spikes there. Would have been horrible. Would have been a massacre. And these guys are done. 
And now we get a really cool screen conveyance. We are now, we are now in the thick of night. We started this, this, this stage during the day and it has gone completely from one thing to another. Also that buzzard just completely destroyed me and I should have seen that one coming. Should have seen that one coming. It's annoying because we were right by the boss gate as well. Like the boss gate is literally just at the end of that area, so. There we go. And back down here. This time let's not get killed by the buzzard. Yes. Distract the buzzard. And we're almost there. And we're there. And there's Sheriff Man. He looks pretty cool, you know? Really nice art of him over the door. So let's see how Sheriff Man actually fights. He blows off his gun when he gets ready to shoot us. True boy. Whee! And he's a shield user. And if you can't tell, those are sheriff stars that he fires at you. But he's not the most difficult of bosses, admittedly. Most of his attacks are just jumpable. Which, you know, it's mo that's Mega Man, but you know. Go on, fire- oh, I wanted you to fire your stars! Oh, here we go. There we go. And he's done. All right. Let's see what the judges had to say about Sheriff Man. And I really like that stage. That's one of my favorites. Snow Red Pyro, 44, uh, 44, 45 out of 50. What Tomahawk Man stage should have been, to be honest. There's a lot of inspiration drawn from the stage, really with the Coltons and the Wavy Sun and Proto Man showing up. This whole level just gives me serious Mega Man 6 vibes, and it might just be the enemy choices. Speaking of enemies, those vultures were amazing, and I want to see them used more, lol. The level itself is really great and fun to play, and I really love the tiny little details present, like how you had the saloons in the backgrounds, and the wanted posters of Mega Man and Proto Man. The whole western vibe in this level is just really awesome, and the boss fight with Sheriff Man is very fun and fast paced too, which is surprising because the boss is a shield user. The whole level is really just pure fun and I love it, it's a great level overall, it looks in place fantastically and it feels very professional. Juby Hornet 47 out of 50, that was awesome! Seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if this level makes the top 10. <laughs> Ah, you know, yeah, <laughs> 11th. Uh, it really felt like something straight out of a Mega Man game. The backgrounds were awesome, especially the sunset with that heat wave effect. The gameplay was fun and the enemies were fitting to the stage's theme. Those birds got annoying though. I really liked the secret Proto Man encounter. You were the only person in the contest to do that. And of course, the boss. Sheriff Man was a lot of fun to fight. It was a battle with fast paced attacks that kept you on your toes without being too hard to learn. Fantastic job. Angel, 40 out of 50. Man, I absolutely love the frequent changes in the environment and how the level changes accordingly. I feel like the design, while cleverly built around the aesthetic, still somewhat suffers from it though. The level reuses a similar progression of hopping over pits and shooting different enemies throughout, which can get rather boring after a while. Some enemies near the end were placed in tricky positions, which made them hard to predict if the player doesn't know they're there. But aside from that, the level is fair and fun to play, and the boss is also a lot of fun to fight. Guriri, 39 out of 50. I really like this one. The western theme was awesome and the level was built, uh, well built. I think there's a few moments that are slightly annoying or boring, but it's still very fun. Also, I really like the graphics and music in this stage. Nothing else to say here. Ace Spark, 32 out of 50. Man, so much effort put into what is ultimately quite the forgettable stage as far as design goes. There is so much right though, and to not praise you for what you did right would be a sin. This boss was awesome, if a wee bit easy, and your soul of a new asset, the buzzard, was brilliant. The tile set, music, and graphical flair of the stage, wow, stunning. This was really pretty, and your two new assets hit the Mega Man style completely. But then there is the rest. 
To put it simply, this is one long stage of nothing but enemies. It brings to mind memories of Woodman's stage. Mega Man at its best is more than that, with actual platforming challenges to maintain your interest. The stage really could have benefited from platforming gimmicks. This was a shame, and had you paid more attention to some of the other aspects of this level, we'd have a contender for one of the best stages in the game. I did have fun, and the level is solid, don't get me wrong, but objectively from a design standpoint, I felt this was average, if a bit below average. I'll look forward to seeing the boss in the arena though. I really like that stage, and I think that the theme of Sheriff Man kind of gives it a pass over the fact that, you know, it was more about running and gunning than it was about platforming. I think just the Robot Master and the theme works better with like a, a sort of shooter environment as opposed to a platforming environment. But anyway, it is time to face the Tier 9 boss from Infobox 300. Let's go. And who are we going to be fighting? Well... Hello! What the heck? Butter Nozumi! Excuse me? Ah, Mega Man, I've been expecting you. I apologize for the delay. I had to churn a bit of some training. I have seen some extremely weird stuff in this festival, but this... You act like you're surprised. You see, I have an apprentice named Milk. They were like a son to me. <laughs> then I heard that a replica of them had been sent to this festival celebrating you as a boss. I was deeply offended. I had to set right this injustice. Wait, why would you get offended over that? It was just a hologram. It was a symbolic death. You have no respect for a comrade. I cannot forgive you. We must duel. Oh no. And it's Butter Nozumi. Butter Nozumi comes from, uh, I'm, I think the game Nozumi Man? Also, he didn't spawn with all of his health. Did anyone else notice that? Basically, Nozumi hops into each of these different tubes and changes his attack style each time he hops around. And basically, the goal is just to continue attacking him and just try and stay above his health bar. Because the problem with Nozumi Man is that... Wait for it. The problem with, uh, with, with Butter Nozumi is that he regains health, we don't. Alright, he's now gone to his electricity form. But at the plus side, most of his attacks are fairly, I wouldn't say generic, but I would say that they are predictable. And that's a good thing, because now he's going to switch back to his original attack style, which is the easiest one to avoid. Oh damn, it can't get hit now. That's a problem. And we're dead. Yeah, had a feeling. So yeah, Nozumi isn't the most difficult boss, but if you don't know how to avoid some of his attacks, he can be a bit problematic, mainly with the health regen. That's what really kind of sets him apart. But as long as you get your shots in, he really shouldn't be too difficult. Oh god, tackle fire. There we go. Alright, doing pretty well so far. This is where I'm gonna get hit. Or not. Wow. Ow! Damn it, I almost had a perfect run. Dang it. I'm gonna kinda just stay on the wrong side of him. But this is definitely going to be our winning run. I don't see him beating us at this point. No offense to Bud and Izumi. But you know. It's just not a lot of health left. And boop, and boop. There we go. And with that, Bud and Izumi is down and tier 9 is finished. And that means in the next episode, we'll be taking on tier 10. Now I've done the first four levels of tier 10. What? I have no idea what just bounced me, but we've done- I've done the first four levels of tier 10 already, uh, with the audio issues, so I will know what those are all about, but they are some good levels, and I'm happy replaying them again. So, thank you very much for watching, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, goodbye.